New Media Wikipedia Article Audio New media are forms of media that are native to computers, computational and relying on computers for distribution. Some examples of new media are websites, mobile apps, virtual worlds, multimedia, computer games, human-computer interface, computer animation and interactive computer installations. History Definition Globalization As tool for social change National security Interactivity Industry Youth Political campaigns in the United States New media are often contrasted to old media, such as television, radio, and print media, although scholars in communication and media studies have criticized rigid distinctions based on oldness and novelty. New media does not include television programs, feature films, magazines, books, unless they contain technologies that enable digital generative or interactive processes. Wikipedia, an online encyclopedia, is a good example of new media, combining internet-accessible digital text, images, and video with web links, creative participation of contributors, interactive feedback of users and formation of a participant community of editors and donors for the benefit of non-community readers. Facebook is another type of new media, belonging to the category of social media model, in which most users are also participants. Another type of new media is Twitter which also belongs to the social media category, through which users interact with one another and make announcements to which the public receive. Both Facebook and Twitter have risen in usage in recent years and have become an online resource for acquiring information. In the 1950s, connections between computing and radical art began to grow stronger. It was not until the 1980s that Alan Kay and his co-workers at Xerox PARC began to give the computability of a personal computer to the individual, rather than have a big organization be in charge of this. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, however, we seem to witness a different kind of parallel relationship between social changes and computer design. Although causally unrelated, conceptually it makes sense that the Cold War and the design of the web took place at exactly the same time. Writers and philosophers such as Marshall McLuhan were instrumental in the development of media theory during this period. His now famous declaration in Understanding Media, the extensions of man that the medium is the message drew attention to the two often ignored influence media and technology themselves, rather than their content, have on humans' experience of the world and on society broadly. Until the 1980s media relied primarily upon print and analog broadcast models, such as those of television and radio. The last 25 years have seen the rapid transformation into media which are predicated upon the use of digital technologies, such as the Internet and video games. However, these examples are only a small representation of new media. The use of digital computers has transformed the remaining old media, as suggested by the advent of digital television and online publications. Even traditional media forms such as the printing press have been transformed through the application of technologies such as image manipulation software like Adobe Photoshop and desktop publishing tools. Andrew L. Shapiro argues that the emergence of new, digital technologies signals a potentially radical shift of who is in control of information, experience, and resources. W. Russell Newman suggests that whilst the new media have technical capabilities to pull in one direction, economic and social forces pull back in the opposite direction. 
According to Newman, we are witnessing the evolution of a universal interconnected network of audio, video, and electronic text communications that will blur the distinction between interpersonal and mass communication and between public and private communication. Newman argues that new media will. Consequently, it has been the contention of scholars such as Douglas Kellner and James Bowman that new media, and particularly the Internet, provide the potential for a democratic postmodern public sphere, in which citizens can participate in well-informed, non-hierarchical debate pertaining to their social structures. Contradicting these positive appraisals of the potential social impacts of new media are scholars such as Ed Herman and Robert McChesney who have suggested that the transition to new media has seen a handful of powerful transnational telecommunications corporations who achieve a level of global influence which was hitherto unimaginable. Scholars, such as Lister Etal have highlighted both the positive and negative potential and actual implications of new media technologies, suggesting that some of the early work into new media studies was guilty of technological determinism whereby the effects of media were determined by the technology themselves, rather than through tracing the complex social networks which governed the development, funding, implementation and future development of any technology. Based on the argument that people have a limited amount of time to spend on the consumption of different media, displacement theory argue that the viewership or readership of one particular outlet leads to the reduction in the amount of time spent by the individual on another. The introduction of new media, such as the Internet, therefore reduces the amount of time individuals would spend on existing old media which could ultimately lead to the end of such traditional media. Although there are several ways that new media may be described, Lefmanovich, in an introduction to the new media reader, defines new media by using eight propositions. The rise of new media has increased communication between people all over the world and the Internet. It has allowed people to express themselves through blogs, websites, videos, pictures, and other user-generated media. Flew stated that, as a result of the evolution of new media technologies, globalization occurs. Globalization is generally stated as more than expansion of activities beyond the boundaries of particular nation-states. Globalization shortens the distance between people all over the world by the electronic communication and Cairn Cross expresses this great development as the death of distance. New media radically break the connection between physical place and social place, making physical location much less significant for our social relationships. However, the changes in the new media environment create a series of tensions in the concept of public sphere. According to Ingrid Volkmer, public sphere is defined as a process through which public communication becomes restructured and partly disembedded from national political and cultural institutions. This trend of the globalized public sphere is not only as a geographical expansion form a nation to worldwide, but also changes the relationship between the public, the media, and state. Virtual communities are being established online and transcend geographical boundaries, eliminating social restrictions. Howard Rheingold describes these globalized societies as self-defined networks, which resemble what we do in real life. People in virtual communities use words on screens to exchange pleasantries and argue, engage in intellectual discourse, conduct commerce, make plans, brainstorm, gossip, feud, fall in love, create a little high art and a lot of idle talk. For Sherry Tickle making the computer into a second self, finding a soul in the machine, can substitute for human relationships. New media has the ability to connect like-minded others worldwide. 
while this perspective suggests that the technology drives and therefore is a determining factor in the process of globalization, arguments involving technological determinism are generally frowned upon by mainstream media studies. Instead academics focus on the multiplicity of processes by which technology is funded, researched, and produced, forming a feedback loop when the technologies are used and often transformed by their users, which then feeds into the process of guiding their future development. While commentators such as Castells espouse a soft determinism whereby they contend that technology does not determine society, nor does society script the course of technological change, since many factors, including individual inventiveness and entrepreneurialism, intervene in the process of scientific discovery, technical innovation, and social applications, so the final outcome depends on a complex pattern of interaction. Indeed the dilemma of technological determinism is probably a false problem since technology is society and society cannot be understood without its technological tools. This, however, is still distinct from stating that societal changes are instigated by technological development, which recalls the theses of Marshall McLuhan. Minovich and Castells have argued that whereas mass media corresponded to the logic of industrial mass society, which values conformity over individuality, new media follows the logic of the post-industrial or globalized society whereby every citizen can construct her own custom lifestyle and select her ideology from a large number of choices. Rather than pushing the same objects to a mass audience, marketing now tries to target each individual separately. Social movement media has a rich and storied history that has changed at a rapid rate since new media became widely used. The Zapatista Army of National Liberation of Chiapas, Mexico were the first major movement to make widely recognized and effective use of new media for communiques and organizing in 1994. Since then, new media has been used extensively by social movements to educate, organize, share cultural products of movements, communicate, coalition build, and more. The WDO Ministerial Conference of 1999 protest activity was another landmark in the use of new media as a tool for social change. The WDO protests used media to organize the original action, communicate with and educate participants, and was used as an alternative media source. The indie media movement also developed out of this action, and has been a great tool in the democratization of information, which is another widely discussed aspect of new media movement. Some scholars even view this democratization as an indication of the creation of a radical, socio-technical paradigm to challenge the dominant, neoliberal, and technologically determinist model of information and communication technologies. A less radical view along these same lines is that people are taking advantage of the Internet to produce a grassroots globalization, one that is anti-neoliberal and centered on people rather than the flow of capital. Chanel Adams a feminist blogger for the bi-weekly webpaper The Media says that in her commitment to anti-oppressive feminist work, it seems obligatory for her to stay in the know just to remain relevant to the struggle. In order for Adams and other feminists who work towards spreading their messages to the public, new media becomes crucial towards completing this task, allowing people to access a movement's information instantaneously. Of course, some are also skeptical of the role of new media in social movements. Many scholars point out unequal access to new media as a hindrance to broad-based movements, sometimes even oppressing some within a movement. Others are skeptical about how democratic or useful it really is for social movements, even for those with access.
New media has also found a use with less radical social movements such as the Free Hugs campaign. Using websites, blogs, and online videos to demonstrate the effectiveness of the movement itself. Along with this example the use of high-volume blogs has allowed numerous views and practices to be more widespread and gain more public attention. Another example is the ongoing Free Tibet campaign which has been seen on numerous websites as well as having a slight tie-in with the band Gorillaz in their Gorillaz by Tez clip featuring the lead singer 2D sitting with protesters at a Free Tibet protest. Another social change seen coming from new media is trends in fashion and the emergence of subcultures such as text speak, cyberpunk, and various others. Following trends in fashion and text speak, New media also makes way for trendy social change. The Ice Bucket Challenge is a recent example of this. All in the name of raising money for ALS, participants are nominated by friends via Facebook, Twitter and own Mirror to dump a bucket of ice water on themselves, or donate to the ALS Foundation. This became a huge trend through Facebook's tagging tool allowing nominees to be tagged in the post. The videos appeared on more people's feeds, and the trend spread fast. This trend raised over $100 million for the cause and increased donations by 3,500%. New media has also recently become of interest to the global espionage community as it is easily accessible electronically in database format and can therefore be quickly retrieved and reverse engineered by national governments. Particularly of interest to the espionage community are Facebook and Twitter, two sites where individuals freely divulge personal information that can then be sifted through and archived for the automatic creation of dossiers on both people of interest and the average citizen. New media also serves as an important tool for both institutions and nations to promote their interest and values. Some communities consider it an approach of peaceful evolution that may erode their own nation's system of values and eventually compromise national security. Interactivity has become a term for a number of new media use options evolving from the rapid dissemination of Internet access points, the digitalization of media, and media convergence. In 1984, Rice defined new media as communication technologies that enable or facilitate user-to-user -user interactivity and interactivity between user and information. Such a definition replaces the one-to-many model of traditional mass communication with the possibility of a many-to-many -many web of communication. Any individual with the appropriate technology can now produce his or her online media and include images, text, and sound about whatever he or she chooses. Thus the convergence of new methods of communication with new technologies shifts the model of mass communication, and radically reshapes the ways we interact and communicate with one another. In What is New Media? Ven Crosby described three different kinds of communication media. He saw interpersonal media as one-to-one, -one, mass media as one-to-many, and finally new media as individuation media or many-to-many. -many. When we think of interactivity and its meaning, we assume that it is only prominent in the conversational dynamics of individuals who are face-to-face. -face. This restriction of opinion does not allow us to see its existence in mediated communication forums. Interactivity is present in some programming work, such as video games. It's also viable in the operation of traditional media. In the mid-1990s, filmmakers started using inexpensive digital cameras to create films. It was also the time when moving image technology had developed, which was able to be viewed on computer desktops in full motion. This development of new media technology was a new method for artists to share their work and interact with the big world. 
Other settings of interactivity include radio and television talk shows, letters to the editor, listener participation in such programs, and computer and technological programming. Interactive new media has become a true benefit to everyone because people can express their artwork in more than one way with the technology that we have today and there is no longer a limit to what we can do with our creativity. Interactivity can be considered a central concept in understanding new media, but different media forms possess, or enable different degrees of interactivity and some forms of digitized and converged media are not in fact interactive at all. Tony Feldman considers digital satellite television as an example of a new media technology that uses digital compression to dramatically increase the number of television channels that can be delivered, and which changes the nature of what can be offered through the service, but does not transform the experience of television from the user's point of view and thus lacks a more fully interactive dimension. It remains the case that interactivity is not an inherent characteristic of all new media technologies, unlike digitization and convergence. Terry Flew argues that the global interactive games industry is large and growing, and is at the forefront of many of the most significant innovations in new media. Interactivity is prominent in these online video games such as World of Warcraft, The Sims Online and Second Life. These games, which are developments of new media, allow for users to establish relationships and experience a sense of belonging that transcends traditional temporal and spatial boundaries. These games can be used as an escape or to act out a desired life. Will Wright creator of The Sims, is fascinated by the way gamers have become so attached to his invention with some even living their lives through it. New media have created virtual realities that are becoming virtual extensions of the world we live in. With the creation of Second Life and active worlds before it, people have even more control over this virtual world, a world where anything that a participant can think of can become a reality. New media changes continuously because it is constantly modified and redefined by the interaction between users, emerging technologies, cultural changes, etc. New forms of new media are emerging like Web 2.0 tools Facebook and YouTube, along with video games and the consoles they are played on. It is helping to make video games and video game consoles branch out into new media as well. Gamers on YouTube post videos of them playing video games they like and that people want to watch. Cultural changes are happening because people can upload their gaming experiences to a Web 2.0 tool like Facebook and YouTube for the world to see. Consoles like the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 have Wi-Fi connectivity and chat rooms on most of their video games that allow gamer-to-gamer -gamer conversations around the world. They also allow people to connect to YouTube, so if they stream slash record a gamer, it allows for easy uploading to YouTube for the world to see. Even the older video game consoles are becoming new media because YouTube can display the walkthroughs and let's plays of the game. YouTube gaming is evolving because some YouTubers are getting wealthy and earning money from their videos. The more people that become YouTube members, the popular YouTube becomes and the more it starts emerging as a new source of media, along with video games and consoles. The chat room slash online gaming slash Wi-Fi consoles are getting the highest increase in popularity because they are not only the most advanced, but because of the newest video games being created that the majority of the gaming community wants to buy, play, and watch. The older video games and consoles also get popularity, but from YouTube's capabilities of uploading them to the gamers' channels for everyone to see. The older games get popularity from the community's nostalgia of the game, 
and the old school graphics and gameplay that made people see how old school technology was the best at some point in time. Facebook helps those video games and consoles get popularity as well. People can upload the videos they create to Facebook as well. Facebook is a much larger website with a lot more users, so people use Facebook to spread their gaming content as well. The new media industry shares an open association with many market segments in areas such as software slash video game design, television, radio, mobile and particularly movies, advertising, and marketing, through which industry seeks to gain from the advantages of two-way dialogue with consumers primarily through the Internet. As a device to source the ideas, concepts, and intellectual properties of the general public, the television industry has used new media and the Internet to expand their resources for new programming and content. The advertising industry has also capitalized on the proliferation of new media with large agencies running multi-million dollar interactive advertising subsidiaries. Interactive websites and kiosks have become popular. In a number of cases advertising agencies have also set up new divisions to study new media. Public relations firms are also taking advantage of the opportunities in new media through interactive PR practices. Interactive PR practices include the use of social media to reach a mass audience of online social network users. Alter the meaning of geographic distance, allow for a huge increase in the volume of communication, provide the possibility of increasing the speed of communication, provide opportunities for interactive communication, allow forms of communication that were previously separate to overlap and interconnect. Brand New Media, Adcore Creative, 7 West Media With the rise of the Internet, many new career paths were created. Before the rise, many technical jobs were seen as nerdy. The Internet led to creative work that was seen as laid-back and diverse amongst sex, race, and sexual orientation. Web design, gaming design, webcasting, blogging, and animation are all creative career paths that came with this rise. At first glance, the field of new media may seem hip, cool, creative and relaxed. What many don't realize is that working in this field is tiresome. Many of the people that work in this field don't have steady jobs. Work in this field has become project-based. Individuals work project to project for different companies. Most people are not working on one project or contract, but multiple ones at the same time. Despite working on numerous projects, People in this industry receive low payments, which is highly contrasted with the touchy millionaire stereotype. It may seem as a carefree life from the outside, but it is not. New media workers work long hours for little pay and spend up to 20 hours a week looking for new projects to work on. The ideology of new media careers as an egalitarian and stress-free environment is a myth. It is a game of networking and thriving at what you are capable of. Many workers face job instability. Inequality within this field exists due to the informality and flexibility of this career path. Within the industry, many companies have emerged or transformed to adapt to the fast-moving exciting opportunities that new media offers. The following companies are great examples of the changing landscape of companies slash agencies whom have redeveloped, added or changed services to offer new media services. Based on nationally representative data, a study conducted by Kaiser Family Foundation in five-year intervals in 1998-99, 2000 and 304, and 2008-09 found that with technology allowing nearly 24-hour media access, 
the amount of time young people spend with entertainment media has risen dramatically, especially among black and Hispanic youth. Today, 8 to 18 year olds devote an average of 7 hours and 38 minutes to using entertainment media in a typical day about the same amount most adults spend at work per day. Since much of that time is spent media multitasking, they actually manage to spend a total of 10 hours and 45 minutes worth of media content in those 7 one half hours per day. According to the Pew Internet and American Life Project, 96% of 18 to 29 year olds and three quarters of teens now own a cell phone, 88% of whom text, with 73% of wired American teens using social networking websites, a significant increase from previous years. A survey of over 25,000 9 to 16 year olds from 25 European countries found that many underage children use social media sites despite the site's stated age requirements, and many youth lack the digital skills to use social networking sites safely. The development of the new digital media demands a new educational model by parents and educators. The parental mediation become a way to manage the children's experiences with internet, chat, video games and social network. A recent trend in internet is YouTubers generation. YouTubers are young people who offer free video in their personal channel on YouTube. There are videos on games, fashion, food, cinema, and music, where they offer tutorial or comments. The role of cellular phones, such as the iPhone, has created the inability to be in social isolation, and the potential of ruining relationships. The iPhone activates the insular cortex of the brain, which is associated with feelings of love. People show similar feelings to their phones as they would to their friends, family, and loved ones. Countless people spend more time on their phones, while in the presence of other people than spending time with the people in the same room or class. In trying to determine the impact of new media on political campaigning and electioneering, the existing research has tried to examine whether new media supplants conventional media. Television is still the dominant news source, but new media's reach is growing. What is known is that new media has had a significant impact on elections and what began in the 2008 presidential campaign established new standards for how campaigns would be run. Since then, campaigns also have their outreach methods by developing targeted messages for specific audiences that can be reached via different social media platforms. Both parties have specific digital media strategies designed for voter outreach. Additionally, their websites are socially connected, engaging voters before, during, and after elections. Email and text messages are also regularly sent to supporters encouraging them to donate and get involved. Some existing research focuses on the ways that political campaigns, parties, and candidates have incorporated new media into their political strategizing. This is often a multifaceted approach that combines new and old media forms to create highly specialized strategies. This allows them to reach wider audiences, but also to target very specific subsets of the electorate. They are able to tap into polling data and in some cases harness the analytics of the traffic and profiles on various social media outlets to get real-time data about the kinds of engagement that is needed and the kinds of messages that are successful or unsuccessful. One body of existing research into the impact of new media on elections investigates the relationship between voters' use of new media and their level of political activity. They focus on areas such as attentiveness, knowledge, attitudes, orientations, and engagement. In references a vast body of research, Owen points out that older studies were mixed, 
while newer research reveals more consistent evidence of information gain. Some of that research has shown that there is a connection between the amount and degree of voter engagement and turnout. However, new media may not have overwhelming effects on either of those. Other research is tending toward the idea that new media has reinforcing effect, that rather than completely altering, by increasing involvement, it imitates the established pattern of political participation. After analyzing the Citizenship Involvement Democracy Survey, NAM found that the Internet plays a dual role in mobilizing political participation by people not normally politically involved, as well as reinforcing existing offline participation. These findings chart a middle ground between some research that optimistically holds new media up to be an extremely effective or extremely ineffective at fostering political participation. Towner found, in his survey of college students, that attention to new media increases offline and online political participation particularly for young people. His research shows that the prevalence of online media boosts participation and engagement. His work suggests that it seems that online sources that facilitate political involvement, communication, and mobilization, particularly campaign websites, social media, and blogs, are the most important for offline political participation among young people. Deliberation when gauging effects and implications of new media on the political process, one means of doing so is to look at the deliberations that take place in these digital spaces. In citing the work of several researchers, Halpern and Gibbs define deliberation to be the performance of a set of communicative behaviors that promote thorough discussion and the notion that in this process of communication the individuals involved weigh carefully the reasons for and against some of the propositions presented by others. The work of Halpern and Gibbs suggests that although social media may not provide a forum for intensive or in-depth policy debate, it nevertheless provides a deliberative space to discuss and encourage political participation, both directly and indirectly. Their work goes a step beyond that as well though because it shows that some social media sites foster a more robust political debate than do others such as Facebook which includes highly personal and identifiable access to information about users alongside any comments they may post on political topics. This is in contrast to sites like YouTube whose comments are often posted anonymously.